Good morning all. I have stuff in envelopes which I need, so I better open the envelopes. So yeah, this is another poster bag. Now, post bag 137 got destroyed in the editing process. I meant to edit a section out, and I edited everything else out, and it ended up being four seconds long. So in the description below this video, I'll add in the items for post bag 137. I might even call this 137 stroke 138 so that I don't lose my contiguity, if that's a word. Right, let's have a look at what's in here. Ah, yes. Now these are the red ring terminals. So I think red, having a red little shrouded plastic thing on, um, defines the diameter of the wire entry. We can remove that, of course. And in fact, I probably will remove that. In fact, let's remove that right now, if it will come off nice and easily. Yes, this one is coming off. So this is the smallest diameter wire entry, but it's a giant size uh, ring. This is an eight millimeter for the eight millimeter bolts, which are on my lead acid batteries. Now, the reason I take these uh, crimp shrouds off is because I tend to solder these and then I'll put on some red heat shrink. Also, of course, this color defines the size not the polarity, so you can't get black ones of these. So I'll put black and red heat shrink on these uh, to indicate polarity. And I have an immediate requirement for these ring terminals because at the moment I've got my linking wires just uh, pushed under these uh, nuts here. And uh, it would be much better if I have the terminals on this because I actually want to move this charge controller from battery number one, not to battery number two because that is fully charged. But battery number three is struggling, it's at about 12.6 volts. And I measured the current coming in on these very uh, thin wires, and then they're aluminium as well, not copper. I can't get that off. And it was only about 100 milliamps. And I calculated that uh, to charge this battery up would take about a month and a half or something. So I want to raise the uh, thickness of these wires, go to copper instead of aluminium. So yeah, this is where I need those terminals. So these are said items, uh, 10 or 25 pieces of, well, this range of M sizes, I went for M8, insulated crimp ring terminals, you can pull the insulation off. Of course, I went for the 8.4 millimeter. Um, there is actually a 13 millimeter with this narrow wire entry, this uh, red colored one, but uh, I went for the eight millimeter. So what are they there? $2.56. How many did I get? Oh, 25, I think. Yeah, 25 pieces. Uh, 89 cents shipping. And I got these from Elecmal. And uh, these, of course, replace these great big heavy duty ones with very large diameter wire entry, which now, of course, are unsuitable for what I'm trying to do because I'm using the uh, very small diameter cable because I'm using this low current distribution between batteries. So yeah, those are ideal. And the next one is one times cable. Let's check it out, which I think this really should be two times cable. But let's see what's in here. Yes, two times cable. Interesting. Now I wanted some ribbon cable for the vocoder project because I'm going to use ribbon cable to string all of the filter boards together because there are some signals which need to be just sent to all of the filters. So you've got like one audio signal going to 14 separate circuits. And I just figured the best way to do this would be ribbon cable with these IDC connectors because you can put as many of these as you want on the length of ribbon cable. Now this was advertised, I've got a funny feeling I ordered this about six months ago and it never turned up and I just had to order it again. But it was advertised as one meter length. Now does that mean a total of one meter length because there are two pieces in here but actually looking at this I've got a feeling we've got two separate one meter lengths yes I mean that's half a meter and that's folded so yeah there are two separate one meter lengths here which isn't bad now I previously ordered uh, quite a lot of these 16 pin IDC connectors two rows of eight of course and on this I'm going to uh, well I have done on the PCB tied all of one side of this connector to ground, which means that ground will appear on alternate uh, ribbon cables so that ground separates all of the signals so that they 
you can uh, minimize crosstalk between the uh, separate signals running down this ribbon cable. And one of the signals is quite a dramatically large signal. So that has lots of grounds separating it, it's right on the end, from everything else. I'm hoping that's going to work. Let's take a look at where this is going to go on the front panel. So here's the back of the front panel with all my circuit boards, input board, second input board, which uh, I haven't got a second pot for. This is the board that actually has the ribbon cable. These, incidentally, are completely irrelevant because they're going to be uh, phonos like these. But there's the ribbon cable connector, and I'm just going to use a two-row DuPont for that. Uh, I don't know whether you can see that all of one side are connected to ground. You probably can if I get really close, uh, if this thing will focus. Yeah, it has. You can see that um, all along that side, they're spoked onto the ground plane. So those are my ground separating wires. So the ribbon cable will come off the bottom of the seven boards that run across the top where these holes are. So they'll all be daisy chained together. And then at this point, it will drop down connect onto this board and then go back up and daisy chain on the remaining top boards. I have those boards, they've come in, I'll show them soon. But yeah, there are seven of those. So this will have eight connectors, seven hanging off the bottom of the top row of boards and one sitting on the top of this lower row board. So this is the item and it is two pieces, uh, 2.54 millimeter pitch. Now that's actually the pitch between the holes on these connectors. The pitch between um, conductors on the cable is actually half of that, 1.27 millimeters, but I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Two by eight, so that's 16 pin, 16 wire, IDC flat ribbon cable, length one meter, that's two pieces, total length of each piece, one meter, $6.99, free shipping, new departure 2010. The next one I want to open is this. It is, it's one of these uh, 12 volt to 220 volt inverters. In fact, it even says that there, 12 volt, 220 volt. Uh, but you can run it at much lower voltages. And I worked out that you can run it right down to half a volt. And it has about a 20 to one uh, step up ratio. So half a volt gives you 10 volts. One volt on the input, input will give you uh, 20 volts on the output. Let me open this up. So this is a two transistor Royer oscillator. Uh, it's, uh, it's effectively an LCR oscillator because we have an inductor uh, capacitor. Actually, where's the capacitor? Yeah, that's the capacitor which sits across the input, I think. I did drill this in a previous video, but I can't quite remember. Uh, two transistors to get the uh, two phases of the signal running. And on the output, there's a bridge rectifier. Now this one, it's implemented as four discrete diodes. The other one I've got is over here. And this one actually had um, a, an integrated bridge rectifier on it. And of course, my plan is to use these for uh, transferring energy from a multi-cell, either supercapacitor pack or uh, batteries, lithium ion batteries, um, from the individual cell out to the whole pack. So I'll have a set of these uh, three, for example, on a three cell pack. And on each cell, you'd have one of these with a button, press the button, and that cell, the energy from that cell would be distributed out to all three cells. So some of it goes back into the same cell that it's coming out. Now, of course there are losses, these transistors get warm, but it's a way of redistributing energy between the cells of a series connected string so I'm going to use this as a balancing system. So now that this one's turned up, I'm immediately going to order another one. It may be different again, but it doesn't really matter. I actually quite like when things turn up and every single one of them is slightly different. Uh, for example, this one has the input choke uh, as a, looks a bit like a transformer uh, with a ferrite core through it. This one, uh, this one has a toroidal ferrite core through it, of course, but it does the same job. Now I do actually have a second idea for these, and that is that on the output, uh, prior to the bridge rectifier, in fact I might even take the bridge rectifier off, I put a piezo tweeter. Because um, I figure that that's the way to get power out of a piezo high frequency tweeter is to give it lots of voltage. Now this will give it a sine wave, 
you can pretty much pick the frequency by adjusting the voltage on the input. And I thought it'd be great fun to have a very loud sort of 20 kilohertz ish oscillator, which I wouldn't be able to hear. Great. But some people would be able to hear. That could be quite fun. So here is item and uh, the photograph is actually a very good representation of the item I got with its green transistors and its toroidal cord uh, input choke. It's a 12 volts, 220 volts step up power module, 35 watts, probably would get very hot at 35 watts, but uh, let's rate it for 20. DC to AC, yes, that's right, because the two transistors act as a, a, an oscillator, so you turn DC into AC. Boost inverter module to Chanwus. What on earth is Chanwus? $2.36, and I'm immediately going to order another one. Uh, does not ship to the United Kingdom. Well, I think it does. New one, 2019. And uh, finally, this one, which is already open, and it is a gift, but no other customs information at all. They don't seem to care too much about that sort of thing. And it's in this big roll of bubble wrap. I just feel that at some point or other, we're going to have to have a plastic tax. I don't know whether it would be uh, taxed at the sort of uh, point where products are made or whether it be a taxation on the granules of plastic used to manufacture products but yeah one day there's going to have to be a plastic tax. Um, so this is a metal and plastic item and you can probably see it's DuPont pin headers and uh, this particular variant of these DuPont headers is standard pin length double row so ideal as a mate that's not a standard uh, PCB mounting plug because those have a sort of surround and some of them have little clippy ear things which come over and clip over the top of here and hold the plug in. But I figured that was all kind of a bit unnecessary really. So these are going to go into my PCB and provide the plug for these sockets so that will go in there like. That's what it's for. Now, how easy is it to break off uh, a specific length of these? So I want uh, two by eight. Oh yes, that's relatively straightforward. So that should fit in my PCB. And it's gonna go right there. Oh, that's starting to look very exciting. Yeah, so these signals, uh, I can't remember what they are. Uh, I think it's, yeah, speech. So speech comes in on the uh, mono jacks here, is pre-amplified here to get it up to sort of line level. One of these sockets goes off to the PPM, the VU meter. Another one will go into here. And as you can see, that's just tracked straight out onto the ribbon cable. So the idea is that speech just comes onto this board simply to get it onto the ribbon cable. And then it goes into all of the speech filters on the filter boards. So speech doesn't actually really do anything on this board just goes to the ribbon cable. Now I was kind of thinking I think I've got some of these already but um, they're different. These are straight, they're double row but these are long pin and would be mm, in a bit inappropriate really for the uh, ribbon cable connectors. Yes yeah, so I've got the long pin ones I had to buy the regular length pin ones. Here they are, 10 pieces, 2 by 40. 40 seems to be the standard length for this sort of thing. 2.54 millimeter spacing, pin headed double row mail for DIY PCB, blah, blah, blah. At $3.68 for those 10 pieces, 10 times 40 times 2 is the actual number of metal pins. Free shipping, and these came from eSale 2010. And so these are today's post bag items. Now, as usual, big thanks to my sponsor, JLC PCB, who uh, support my channel. And I have to say, I'm having the best fun designing these printed circuit boards. I've really got into it. Um, also, a big thanks to Patreon supporters. Um, if you would also like to become a Patreon supporter, you can click here. There are another couple of videos up here if you want to watch more of my stuff. And if you're not subscribed to this channel and would like to be, you can click this icon here and subscribe. Cheerio.